Hey everyone, my name is Sean Cecil from the Oculus Institute, and today I'm going to teach you what you should charge for your products and services. Okay, so one question that I get a lot from people in my audience who are either freelancers or entrepreneurs or looking at freelancing or entrepreneurship is I get questions about what should I charge for my products and services. But the other way that this can show up is that if I'm, if I'm working with somebody and I see that they're not charging enough and I'll ask them, well, why are you charging this? They'll be like, well, you know, and then they'll give me all these reasons that aren't really great reasons. And, and I'll realize that most people don't really have a good idea of how they should set their prices and what makes sense. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show two methods of determining what you're gonna charge that you should absolutely not use. And then I'm gonna share the two methods that you should use, right? And ultimately that's gonna allow you to, to, to get a clear price on what makes sense. The first method that people will normally say is they'll say, oh, well, I'm charging this because I think that this is what people are going to pay. That is an incredibly problematic way to set your prices uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, you don't know what people are gonna pay. You have no idea until you get in there and you ask them and you've had, you know, hundreds of sales conversations or you know, you've collected like tons of data, if you don't have that data, if you don't know what your conversion rates are and how they vary, then you're just going off your, you know, your gut. And in many cases, that's gonna get wrapped up with all kinds of insecurities and, and that number's not gonna be accurate. The second reason why you wanna avoid just charging what you think people are gonna pay is because if you're doing that, then you're not actually looking at how it affects you. You're not actually looking about whether it makes sense for you. And you're not realizing that, you know, you may be in a situation where if that's true and that's all people are going to pay, then you don't have a viable business or a viable freelancing arrangement as it's currently constructed. And you need to find some way to add some more value to justify a higher price, right? So you can't just ignore yourself and how it affects you and what's going on there, right? That, that, that would be incredibly problematic. The third reason uh, why it's a really bad idea to just set what you're going to charge based off of what you think people will pay is that there's a wide spectrum of people who will pay a very different amount for any given thing. So, you know, if you're saying, hey, listen, I think 90% of people will pay $10, right? And, you know, it costs you $9 to deliver it. And then, you know, you're, you're picking up dollars here and there, um, you know, for some, I don't know, like recorded info thing or whatever. But that's very different from somebody who is going to pay $10,000 or you know, shit, I know a guy who, who charged somebody $150,000, right, to solve a very specific, very powerful problem, right? And that, that guy who charged $150,000, that's worth, you know, uh, 150,000, like little $1 marginal things, right? And so, you know, if you're, if you're aiming it at the majority, you could be missing the people who really, really, really want what you, your specific skill and your specific expertise the most and are willing to pay the most for it. So going off of what you think people will charge and trying to avoid ever hearing no in a sales conversation, that's not, because that's ultimately the root of it, that's not the way you want to go. Now, the second thing that I've seen people do that you don't want to do is I've seen people say, oh, well, I'm going to charge what that other person who does something similar is charging. That's, that's a horrible idea for two reasons, right? One reason, is that you have no idea whether that other person has any clue what they're doing when it comes to setting their own prices, right? They could be operating on that same flawed model of what they think people are gonna pay. You have no idea, right? You have no idea how they came to those numbers and their logic could be totally wrong, right? The second reason is a horrible idea is that if you're competing with this person, you wanna differentiate yourself in some way. Either differentiate yourself by setting a lower price and out-competing them, or differentiate yourself by setting a higher price and delivering a better product and a better service to justify that. Don't do the same thing because they're established and you're not. Now you're walking right into, right into a competition trap that you're, the odds are stacked against you. So you don't wanna be doing the exact same thing as somebody else. Generally in business, if you ever say, oh, I'm gonna do this because so-and-so is doing it, you're gonna have a problem. So if you don't want to go off of what you think people are going to pay, if you don't want to go off of what other people are charging, then how do you determine what you're going to charge? Well, there are two things that you need to take into account. One is what does it cost you to actually deliver the service? And this isn't just in terms of monetary outlay to deliver the product or service. It's also for paying any staff that are involved for your time which should be valued fairly, right? You don't want to value, you know, like if, you, if you're getting, if you're getting hundred dollars for something, it costs you $50 to make it happen. And it takes you 10 hours to deliver. You're paying yourself $5 an hour. That's below minimum wage. You're doing it wrong. Don't do that, right? So you want to value your time fairly, 
right? And, and you wanna make sure that, you know, given all of the expenses, given all of the time expense that you have to put into it, right? Does the price justify it and doesn't make it really worth your time? It doesn't make it, you know, something where you're like, hey, listen, I feel really good at working for this rate. Right? If it doesn't, then you're setting your prices too low. Now, the second thing you, you absolutely have to think about when it comes to setting prices is what's the actual value being delivered to the customer or the client. And that is not what do you think they're gonna pay. That is completely separate. So the actual value is if they knew with 100% certainty that you would snap your fingers and they would instantly have what you promise, how much benefit would that be to them? It's not the same as what they're gonna pay. It doesn't take into account their liquidity. It doesn't take into account their fear. It doesn't take into account you know, their unwillingness to potentially do their end of something that they need to, need, may need to do. It doesn't take into account any of that. It just takes into account how much is that really worth, right? So for example, if you say, hey, I can help you increase your income by $50,000 a year, right? Which is something that I've done with many people, right? Uh, if you look at that over the course of someone's life, just say they have, you know, 30 more years in, in the workforce, right? That's uh, 1.5 million, 30 times 50,000, 1.5 million, and that's before compounding. So that is a $1.5 million value at least, right? That doesn't mean that they're gonna pay $1.5 million. That's, not, that's probably not gonna happen, right? Because they don't have that money yet, right? So this is why I'm saying like the actual value and what they're gonna pay are totally separate things, right? But you wanna look at that actual value and you wanna shoot to be charging somewhere between five and 10% of that actual value, right? That's enough that you're capturing a healthy share of the pie, but it's also a no-brainer for the person that you're talking to, as long as they believe that you can do what you say you can do. When you're setting your prices, you first wanna set the floor at what it really costs you, including a fair value of your time. Then you wanna look at, you know, what is it if you look at this five to 10% of real value? And if you find that five to 10% of real value is lower than the floor that you set, you need to find a way to add more value, right? If you find that the five to 10% of, of real value is above the floor that you set, well then you're off to the races and that's what you should be charging for your products and services. Before you go, I've got a free gift for you. So if you found this video valuable, if it helped you see the world in a new way, and you're interested in building a career that's gonna bring you both personal fulfillment and financial prosperity, then I've got a free presentation for you to help you do just that. So if you go to the link below, it's www.oculusinstitute.com workshop. That's www.oculusinstitute.com slash workshop. Um, then it'll take you to a registration for a free presentation. It's about 50 minutes long, that's five zero, and it's gonna give you the step-by-step -step process to building your dream career. See you there.